Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the start of a very big day of sport here on Channel 7 today with World of Sport replay for the next hour, World of Sport at 11 o'clock, and then we have uh, a special program featuring highlights of the Carriage Cup from London last week between Carlton and North Melbourne. That's coming up at 2 o'clock, and then, of course, at 3, we take you live to VFL Park for the second test between Ireland and Australia in the Gaelic Football Series, and it's certain to be a most exciting encounter after that match in Perth last week. So we have plenty of sport over the next few hours and hope you can stay with us here on 7 right throughout the day. Well, we'll take a look at the Caulfield Cup meeting in just a moment, but before we do, let's have a look at Tats Lotto last night, and it was draw number 547, Division 1 pool $1.517 million, and for a share of that, you need the numbers 11, 21, 22, 28, 30 and 37, with the supplementary numbers 23 and 34. There was over $700,000 in the Super 66 pool last night, and the numbers you required there were 4, 3, 7, 9, 6 and 4. Well, it certainly wasn't the best of days weather-wise out at Caulfield yesterday with the rain falling for most of the day. But, of course, a big program and the running of the Foster's Caulfield Cup was the big one of the day. And we'll be back to take a look at all the action after this break. Sunday. For the Caulfield Cup program at the Heath yesterday, you saw all the action live here on 7 yesterday afternoon. And let's relive it now with the opening race, the Merson Cooper Stakes and the favourite here, Preven Valor, at 11 to 8 on. And your commentator is the accurate one, Bill Collins. There's the light racing. Proven Vela bounced out in front in the centre from getting away well was Prince of the City and Mighty Deer. Then Bowl sculpted disputed Pearl, Barbie's game, Comalina, followed by Hidden Power and Cindy's Appeal. Now last. Past the 800, Proven Vela, a half length of Prince of the City, one further back, Bowl Sculptor. Fourth is Mighty Deer, a length of Hidden Power, Comalina making ground out three deep, followed by Barbie's game, the centre. Two to Cindy's Appeal and disputed Pearl is last. 500 out on the corner, Proven Valor in front, a half length from on the outside now going up quickly, Mighty Deer in the centre still Prince of the City. Then Barbie's game to the outside and looking for a run, Bowl Sculptor from Hidden Power, but around the turn. And Proven Valor is doing it nicely, kicked a length and a half clear from Mighty Deer. He hasn't let this go yet. In third placing on the outside, Hidden Power with 200 to go. Now Clark starts to ride hands and heels and the son of without fear shot away. And Proven Valor, the first favourite, is going to canter in, wins by three lengths to Mighty Deer, third Hidden Power, followed by Prince of the City, Cindy's Appeal, Bowl Sculptor, then Comalina, well back in the field, disputed Pearl, and last was Barbie's game. Yes, he's very good proven, Valor, 11 to 8 on and favourite, an easy win over Mighty Deer at 8 to 1 and Hidden Power at 20 to 1. In the second event, the Stubby Stakes, over 1,600 metres, a wide open affair, Rebecca Gay, the favourite, at 7 to 2. They're racing. Oh, beautiful start to Imperial Regina, Lady Mariel and Seeker Fortune tackling them on the outside quickly to head them off. Cooktown Lady and Hippity Hop well placed and they were followed then by Carondelet and Goblet going around the outside with Dancehall Girl, My Lady Glen, Tone Phil. Then Romp Along about a length to Rebecca Gay followed by Our Dizzy Heights and Chili Con Carney last. At the 1200 they race and seek a fortune joined by Goblet and Dancehall Girl is three deep, a length to Cooktown Lady and on the outside My Lady Glen. Lady Marielle just behind them on the rails followed by Carondelet and a length and a half further back Imperial Regina. On its outside then is uh, Miss Trellbar and a length further back Tone fell over on the rails. Then Hippity Hop and a long gap to romp along Rebecca Gay and our Dizzy Heights back at the rear with Chili Con Carney. At the 800 they race now and Dancehall Girl went around them on the outside to take up the running. My Lady Glen Handy, Seeker Fortune there, Goblet back along the inside with Cooktown Lady, Imperial Regina and Mont Lady Marielle looking for a run, so too is Town Phil, there followed by Carondelet and round the outside, Miss Trellbar from Hippity Hop, Romp Along and Rebecca Gay. On the corner, Seeker Fortune sprinted away a length and a half now to Cooktown Lady, Lady Marielle, Dancehall Girl got a check, My Lady Glen, Town Phil to the outside with Miss Trellbar, Seeker Fortune clear into the straight, a length and a half, Lady Marielle trying to get out from Cooktown Lady, there clear of Tonefield running on, Lady Marielle got the split, went to the lead at the 200 metre mark, here's Romp Along from nowhere with Tonefield, it's Lady Marielle in front, Romp Along the outside is coming home 100 mile an hour and it's going to get up, Romp Along's got up the score from Lady Marielle, Rebecca Gay from the clouds for third just in front of Tonefield, then Miss Trelbar, Cooktown Lady, they were followed further back in the field then by Seeker Fortune who weakened badly with Imperial Regina, Hippity Hop, Goblet, then came at the head of the others would be uh, 
Carondelet with Chili Con Carne out, Dizzy Heights, my lady Glenn and Dancehall Girl, one of the last. Greg Hall bringing Romp along with a well-timed run to score at 7-1 from Lady Marielle 9-2 and Rebecca Gay was a huge effort to run third the 7-2 favourite. In the third the Mercedes Benz over 1,200, it was 4-1 to one the field and the favourite was Cavalry. Racing, caught them pretty well, Goose Lane one of the first out with Cavalry over on the outside beginning quickly with Kiskin something stunning. Ram away driving through along the inside and Gary's Jester going up towards the lead. At the thousand, Cavalry and Gary's Jester are in front about a length of Goose Lane and Ram away, Mr. Swanky over on the inside fence. They were followed just behind them, Jet Fighter and Heroes Honor in a pack of horses now. Then uh, came back behind them, Shiatsu, who's got well back with Moot on, Question of Honor, Amaru Lad and Beach Echo. Gary's Jester led at the 600, a half length of Cavalry, a length of something stunning. Uh, they were followed by Goose Lane around the outside of them, making a strong run, Mr. Swanky the rails, ram away trying to get out, then Stewart's event in the centre followed by Jet Fighter in trouble from Kiskin. Goose Lane went up on the outside to join Cavalry and Gary's Jester, three in line into the straight clear of ram away, then Mr. Swanky at the head of the others from Stewart's event at the 200, three in line, here's a great go, Goose Lane, Cavalry on the rails, Gary's uh, going on well, it's anybody's race with about 100 to go, Gary's Jester fighting back, Cavalry put his head in front Goose Lane might be finishing a fraction the better now and Goose Lane's going to win it from Cavalry third Gary's Jester Mouton ran on fourth from Ramaway they were followed by Kiskin further back in the field then is Amaru Lad. next is Stewart's event followed by Question of Honour and then Heroes Honour followed further back uh, then by Shiatsu something stunning dropped right out with Beach Echo and Iambic one of the last home Goose Lane coming away to score at 6-1 to one from Cavalry, the 4-1 to one favourite, and Gary's Jester third at 7-1. to one. one of the big ones of the day was the 1,000 Guineas. Race 4 over 1,600, the favourite Society Bay at 10-9, to nine, and it was to turn out to be a big upset. They're racing, bounding away, quickly away, with Lockley's daughter, and also getting away well wide, Julie, and uh, Magic Flute, and they're followed by Society Bay up in about fifth position as they settle down into stride. At the end of 200 metres, Society Bay is going to go to the front. Society Bay charged to the lead from bounding away, followed by Wide Julie, three deep, and Lockley's daughter. Three lengths to Magic Flute, a couple to Laylam, a length further back, Shackle. Then came Lark and Doe in that bunch of horses with Born a Lady. A couple of lengths to Lady of Renown at the head of the others from Student and Miss. They're followed further back by Diamond Shower, who's second last with My Cambita and Evandale Stars, three lengths last. At the 1,000 metre mark, Y. Julie went up to join Society Bay. A length and a half further back, bounding away, tucked in on the inside of uh, Lockley's daughter. Magic Flute to the outside next and Shackle making up some ground from La Cadeau. They were followed further back in the field, then Student and Miss coming into it from Borna Lady. Then came My Cambita dropping out of it at this stage with Laylam in the centre of that pack. Then well back is Evandale Star at the rear with Diamond Shower second last. On the turn, 500 out, Society Bay on the inside, joined by Y. Julie, also Magic Flute and Shackle, four in line. Looking for a run is bounding away behind them, and then Lockley's daughter to the outside is Larkado. Highland says go, and Society Bay shot away. Two in front into the straight now from Magic Flute on the outside, Shackle. Uh, the leader's shortening stride, however, then came bounding away, can't go on with it, and out wide, suit and a miss. Suit and a miss and Magic Flute have raced to the front. Magic Flute just the leader. Suit and a miss trying to get to it, but Magic Flute's going to win it. About a neck to Suit and a miss. Third, Shackle. Fourth, Society Bay. Then Lark and Doe, about three lengths to bounding away. Lockley's daughter, Evandale star, Diamond Shower. They were followed by Wide Julie, who's well back in the field with Lady of Renown. And uh, back behind those horses then, Mike Cambita and Layla. Magic Flute at 14 to 1, taking out the 1,000 guineas. Shoot and a miss, a good run second, 66ers. Shackle third at 50 to 1, and Society Bay got the stitch in the last bit and missed the pace at 10 to 9. And so we came to the big one of the day, the Foster's Caulfield Cup for 1986, over 2,400 metres. And Canny Lass, the brilliant mare, was back from 8s into 5 to 1 favourite. Racing. And over near the inside, Faristan jumped in the air, lost two lengths. Mr. Lamondi first out from Atalak. Then the Filbert Samara getting away well, Canny Lass and the Imprimata coming from the outside withdrawn towards the leaders. Tristram going up quickly with Rising Fear and then Born to be Queen followed by Tristark. Next is Periscope and then came our Sophia from Colour Page the outside. Indian Raj back second last and last out of the straight is just now. 
They head towards the 2,000 metre mark now and imprimata the leader from Mr. Lamondi. Rising fear going up to join them. Kenny Lass is fourth. At Talak, fifth on the rails from the Filbert Tristram and drawn a length of Faristan. Then on the outside is Periscope and a length and a half further back, Samara. Then My Tristram's Bell, followed by Colour Page, Our Sophia, two to Born to Be Queen, Tristark. Then came Indian Raj and last of all is just now. At the 1600 and Rising Fear's gone out about two and a half lengths to Imprimata. Two to Mr. Lamondi, one to Canny Lass, at Talak on its inside, a length to Tristram. Half a length to the Filbert, Faristan on the inside of the next bunch, followed by Periscope. Then uh, came on the outside of those horses, now Samara making a little bit of ground. Our Sophia is in the centre, drawn as improved from my Tristram's bell. A length and a half colour page. Then came at the head of the rest then, uh, would be over on the, ins on the uh, inside is Tristark. It was followed by Indian Raj, born to be queen, being hard ridden and just now at the rear, 20 off the lead. 1,100 to go, rising fear a half length to Imprimata. On the outside, Mr Lamondi moving up three deep. At Talak having the run of the race from Cunny, Canny Lass and then came the Filbert. About a length further back in the field then is Tristram from drawn Paristan badly needing a run from Periscope then Samara a length and a half further back our Sophia colour page Tristark Indian Raj is boxed up from Tristram's bell and three lengths to Born to be Queen and just now 700 to go and here Mr Lamondi headed off in Pramata who's uh, in second placing on the outside the Filbert's putting in its challenge from Canny Lass four deep at Talak trying to get out so is Faristan drawn Tristram they're followed then by Periscope at the head of the others from Samara and our Sophia and then colour page into the straight, Mr. Lamondi shot clear. At Talak's got out, going after him now. On the outside of them is the Filbert Faristan starting to run on under the whip, and then came Periscope and Tristram. Mr. Lamondi clear with 200 to go from At Talak. They're well clear then of Faristan and Tristram, but Mr. Lamondi in front with 100 to go, and he's going to win the Caulfield Cup. Mr. Lamondi wins by a little over two lengths to At Talak. Our Sophia got third on the outside, just in front of Tristram. They were followed by Periscope and Indian Raj and Ferris Dan, then Colour Page. Born to be Queen next. Canny Lass dropped right out of it from my Tristram's Bell and the Filbert. Then came Samara uh, in Pramata was next, and one of the last to finish is Tristark withdrawn. So a surprise result in the Caulfield Cup, Mr Lamondi 33 to 1, defeating at Talak at 10 to 1. Our Sophia, a great Melbourne Cup trial at 33 to 1. And Canny Lass, the favourite, was one of the first horses beaten when they turned for home unplaced at 5 to 1. In the sixth event, the VATC National Sprint Championship over 1,100 metres, another wide open affair with Brinkman, the favourite, at 5 to 1. And they're racing. Caught them well, Pir Star Pyramal began well on the inside, Singing Wonder got away quickly with Noosa Gardens also showing a lot of speed and Kiwi Slave trying to head them all off on the outside. Kiwi Slave just in front of, uh, on the outside, not um, Kiwi Slave, Slave Trade. It's got to a narrow lead as they settle down now. Going up on the inside, Noosa Gardens from Star Pyramal, Aqualone, Singing Wonder is there. Then Seeger followed by Brinkman and No Parole behind them. Lord Vane getting back, my good fella. They were followed further back by uh, Warlike and back towards the rear is Bullion Broker and Red Henry last. As they came to the turn now, Slave Trade just in front of Noosa Gardens on the rails in the centre, Star Pyramal. Going around them, Aqualone, now looking for a run is Brinkman. Brinkman with Singing Wonder and then my good fellow Warlike to the outside. In the straight star, Pyramal took a narrow lead from Slave Trade. Brinkman under the whip is getting out. Wider out is Aqualone. My good fellow in trouble. It's Star Pyramal in front of Aqualone. Brinkman, here's Warlike down the outside and Bullion Broker in the centre. Bullion Broker with a great run. Hit the front. Warlike coming out after it but Bullion Broker is going to win. Red Henry from the clouds but Bullion Broker's won it. A half to Warlike, a hit to Red Henry. Then my good fellow Singing Wonder. They're followed by Aqualone, the next break dancer with no parole. Brinkman weakened badly from Seeger. So did Slave Trade, and they were followed further back in the field then by Miss Nisku, who was never in it with Star Pyramal. Noosa Gardens dropped out towards the rear, and Lord Vane was also among the tail enders. And the Gouch finally back in the winner's circle on Bullion Breaker at 10 to 1. Warlike Nines, Red Henry 100 to 1. It was a huge effort. Brinkman was the favourite unplaced at 5 to 1. The Richard Ellis Plate was race 7, last leg of the Quadrilla, and again it was 4 to 1 the field with Bicentenary the favourite. And they're racing. Caught them pretty well too, hard to sort them out early. Top banner, Golden Twig away well. Miner's man showing speed. Vera's boy, Viva Vane out wide joining them. French Colonials up with them as they settle down too and then reputed just behind them with pay homage. 
They were followed a little further back by Lion Duke and then came Celso and Bicentenary. A couple of lengths further back, Educate well back in the field with our Avon's Golden Winter. Top Banner dropping out of it quickly from Ollie's Decree and Red Opaque. At the 1,000, they've gone like the wind. Vera's Boy about a half length in front of Viva Vane. Miner's Man on the inside of them in the centre Persian world. Pay Homage trapped deep, followed by French Colonial. Lion Duke pushing up on the rails from Golden Twig. Bicentenary just behind them in a tightly bunched field from Celso so and Reputed. Top banner to the outside from our Avon's Gold and then came Winter Ollie's Decree, Educate and Red Opaque. On the turn, 500 out. Vera's Boy just in front still from Persian World. Miner's Man is under the whip behind them. Viva Vane the outside. Here's Bicentenary putting in its run. Looking for a way out. French Colonial and Pay Homage and Top Banner right round the outside from Golden Twig. In the straight now and out wide. Viva Vane tackled by our Avon's Gold and Bicentennial and Miner's Man is there. Bicentennial has gone up. They hit the front with our Avon's Gold. They're settling down to fight it out. Our Avon's Gold's taken the lead. Bicentenary trying hard. But our Avon's Gold's broken through at last and goes on to beat by Centenary. Top banner third, they're followed by Reputed. Next is Winter from Ollie's Decree, Educate. Then Miner's Man, further back in the field then was Celso. Uh, Golden Twig, Red Opaque, followed by Viva Vane. Uh, Persian World and then came Pay Homage, well back in the field, Vera's Boy. And Lion Duke and French Colonial back at the rear. Running away at the finish, our Avon's Gold 12 to 1, Bicentenary the 4 to 1 favourite and top banner was third at 20 to 1. The last race on Caulfield Cup Day, the HR Way Welter over about 2,000 metres and the New Zealand Mare, despite her big weight, Joel, she was the favourite at 7 to 2. They're racing. Geyserland a little bit slow to get going on the inside. Colonial King, one of the first out with Waratah Bay, Noble Bay, Joel began well. All spades on the rails, going around them, Chalaware, wise decision, Arato, a couple of links to Jamaica in and then past the hat. Next is Geyser Land, Ovation and the Old Vic is last. Waratah Bay in front of the 1600, about two lengths to Noble Bay, a length and a half wise decision who's pulling like mad. Then Colonial King followed by on the outside all spades, a length to Joel. Two lengths further back, Arado, a couple to Chellaware and then past the hat, a length Jamaica in followed by Geyserland, the old Vic and Ovation. 1300 out and the leader Waratah Bay being steadied, a length and a half wise decision still pulling hard. Three parts to Noble Bay in on the rails third, a length and a half all spades, one to Colonial King and two to Joel. Two and a half lengths Arado, a length and a half Chellaware followed by past the hat Geyserland Jamaica in two to old Vic not traveling well in last ovation a thousand ago Waratah Bay about three quarters now to wise decision a length and a half Noble Bay and all spades three links to Colonial King a length to Joel being sold along and there five links in front of Jamaica in Chellaware Geyserland Arato then came past the hat followed by the old Vic and tailed off ovation with 700 to go and Wise Decision had got up on the outside to tackle Waratah Bay, two lengths to Wall Spades, a length to Noble Bay, a length to Joel and Colonial King, Jamaica in running on a good gap to Chellaware, I don't think the others can win. On the turn, 500 out, Waratah Bay headed by Wise Decision who's pulled very hard though. All Spades third, Joel moving up on its outside, two lengths Colonial King and then Jamaica in followed by Pass the Hat starting to run on. Into the straight they race, wise decision in front, Joel with its big weight coming at it on the outside now. Then all spades, Waratah Bay, but Joel has hit the front out wide, 200 to go from wise decision. There followed by Colonial King, Joel in front, the mare with her big weights going through the going easily and she's racing away. Joel is going to canter in, past the hats running on well with Colonial King, but Joel's won by three lengths, uh, close to the miners. Colonial King second, I think a nose in front of past the hat. All spades fourth, and they're followed by Jamaica in wise decision, Waratah Bay, Arato, Geyserland. Long break to the old Vic, Chalaware, followed by Noble Bay, and Ovation was last to finish. Terrific effort with her 59 and a half, Joel 7 to 2 favourite. Colonial King got second in a photo at 20s and passed the hat 11 to 2. The doubles yesterday, extra double at Caulfield 9 and 481.50, daily double 6 and 10, 190, 20, and the quadrilla on 464 and 9. 9,654.65. In Sydney, the extra 2 and 642.95. Daily double 4 and 5, 22.40. And the quadrilla 645 and 6, 3,419.20. In Adelaide, the extra double 2 and 4, $6.60. The daily double 12 and 2, $85.95. In Brisbane, the daily double 10 and 4 paid uh, $85.95. And at Bendigo, it was one JPEX and any runner in the daily double for a dividend of 95 cents. And the Quadrello with uh, number one JPEX and any runners in the second, third and fourth leagues, a dividend there of 85 cents, with of course Bendigo being cancelled uh, late in the day due to the 
heavy rain that they did have. Well, we'll be back with Greyhound Racing highlights after this break on World of Sport Replay. Huh? Double in Brisbane. It was $40.95 in fact yesterday for the numbers 10 and 4. Well, great.